Hello, hello, my friends. <clears throat> it has been 15 days since I have given you all an update. Last update I did was the morning of my surgery, and I promised a video shortly thereafter. That didn't happen. We had a lot of ups and downs over the last few weeks and some unexpected results from my egg retrieval which had me riding some pretty high and low roller coasters so i'm going to break down the process of the egg retrieval and then the time breaks and then i'm going to break into actually showing you the videos that we took that day so the egg retrieval happens in the morning typically well it was like around lunchtime. mine was on a sunday my doctor had a family emergency his wife's father passed away and he had to leave town so somebody else had to step in so a wonderful doctor named dr lee stepped in into my surgery which was not expected but i have touched on this in other videos you have got to expect there's going to be changes in your IVF cycle. Your doctor, something could happen. Your follicles may not mature fast enough. They may mature too fast. You may ovulate before you're supposed to. There's all sorts of things that are gonna change. So you kind of have to be prepared for that. And I was. So we did the egg retrieval Sunday. <clears throat> then they threw something called ICSI, I-C-S-I, take the individual sperm and the egg, which they would take out of the follicle and inseminate the egg with the sperm. And then they allow them to grow for five days. So when they take all of the eggs out, they take the mature eggs and inseminate through them through ICSI. I had, I don't remember if it was 13 or 14, I think 13 eggs retrieved and only three were mature which was a little bit low. So they tried to inseminate five additional, five additional eggs to see if they would develop into embryos. They did not develop into embryos. So we ended up with three embryos inseminated through ICSI. I'm going to go ahead now and kind of show you some of the videos that I went through that we we took during the day of the procedure and I kind of break down in between those videos what happened and all of that and then at the end of this video I will give you the results of what happened with our embryos so the first video I'm going to show you is after we got into the facility they put my gown on. I think my IV was already in. I was feeling great. Getting ready to go in for my surgery and get these eggs out. I was feeling bloated. Like I could feel exactly where each one of my ovaries was sitting. My left one kind of sits far back. It's hard for the doctor to find with ultrasounds and I could feel it more Hold on, I can't see what you can see. <laughs> All right, so I could feel that one more like, almost like back here, whereas the other one I could feel more. All right, this ain't working. Anyway, I could feel them. I could feel them big time and I was ready for those follicles to be gone and for them to find the eggs inside of the follicles. All right, everybody, we are here. Hi, Pooks. Say hi to YouTube. We're here in the doctor's office. My IV is in. I have my fancy gown on. I'm a hearted. It's almost time for surgery, so I'm getting excited. He's finding and stretching. I'm ready to get these things out of me. I feel extremely bloated now. So I'm ready to get this show on the road. Pooks is going to do the filming and the rest of the stuff. We're working on iPhones because I forgot to bring my camera and we didn't want to be super obvious with cameras in here, but yeah, very excited. See you guys on the other side. Bye. 
All right, next you're just gonna see post-surgery sleepy face. Not a lot to talk about in that video. I didn't have my results yet. I was just tired and relieved, I guess, to be done with the surgery. I literally, so when I woke up from the surgery, I was watching the embryologist, so they have a screen in there, and you can see the embryologist, and by this time they have taken out all of your follicles, um, and they suck them through a catheter and they go right to the embryologist. So I could see all the follicles in the Petri dish, and, um, I could see her actually opening the follicles and taking the eggs out, which was so, so cool. So obviously, like, I was filming right before I went in there. I've got, like, wanting to show you guys every single moment on my mind. And so I wake up and I, like, catapulted straight up and was like, can I have my phone? Like, somebody give me my phone. I really need to video this. Like, I want the world to see how cool this looks. And they were like chill girl you're still in the or your phone's not here relax so i just thought that was really funny like i literally was like youtube needs to see this because this is freaking cool and i really really wish that i could have gotten it on video because i could see all the little follicles like all in this dish and then i could see her separating them and opening them and like this teeny tiny little egg inside of them and it was the most surreal like I don't remember that from last time I don't know if I like slept through it or what or like maybe I was just still too drugged up but like I woke up and I saw it and I was like so excited so I'll let you see what happens next and then come back again and break it down Alright guys, I just woke up from anesthesia. My surgery is done. It's 9.15. What time did I go in, babe? 8.50? I was gone like, what, 20 minutes? Yeah, I wasn't gone for very long. I obviously feel a little groggy. Alright, so next video is in the recovery room. Doctor had just come in and give me my results and I wasn't thrilled. So here come the tears. <laughs> here comes the truth, right? This thing is a roller coaster. Freaking high, 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 plummeting to the lowest lows, back to the highest highs. It's a complete whirlwind. You just gotta ride it out. And feel the feelings like I was upset and I wanted you all to see it because like I have talked so much about the reality of this and it's that things are not always going to go as you would have expected them to go and so here come the tears all right guys the doctor just came in and they were able to get 13 which I know sounds like a high number, but last time they got 17 and I only ended up with two viable embryos. So part of this is being real and transparent. And so I'm a little disappointed and I have a feeling we're gonna have to go right into another cycle. Which just kind of got me feeling a little sad right now. So that's the reality of it. I will pick myself up and move forward. And probably prepare for another cycle next month Let's see what happens so tears are done it's now been let's see it's been a little more than 15 days my embryo retrieve my egg retrieval was the 15th and today is the fourth guys it's been almost 20 days since I've done this I am such a slacker all right but it wasn't until now that I had my final results. So, 13 eggs retrieved. Three mature, five more they tried to inseminate through ICSI. Three made it to day one. Two made it to day three. Those two also made it to day five. 
on day five, we decided to have our embryos genetic screening done. We actually decided this way beforehand. Last time we did not do genetic screening, but we felt like this being our second cycle, it was just really important to have PGS screening done. So we knew like, are the embryos we're getting, right? So an egg isn't an embryo until it's fertilized and makes it to day either three or five, depending on your doctor. What we wanna know is, are these embryos that we're transferring viable healthy embryos or are they embryos that have some sort of genetic abnormality? So Cooper Genomics is the company that tested our embryos. They test for all sorts of genetic abnormalities. Um, they cannot check for things like diabetes or maybe the possibility of having a missing limb but they can test for, I'm just gonna show it to you. Can you see it? So they test for all of this stuff. I'm not exactly sure what it means, um, like the definition of all of these, so I'm just gonna hold it up here for you guys to look at for a second. Anyway, <clears throat> the embryo I miscarried was a normal, genetically healthy embryo, but based on our statistics and our infertility issues, the chances of having normal embryos, like genetically normal embryos, were 30% per embryo, so that's pretty low. Now, we ended up with two genetically normal embryos. I'm not gonna tell you the sex because I want there to be some sort of surprise here. So is it all boys? Is it all girls? Is it a mix? You're not gonna know because we need to have some sort of surprise in our life. So we're keeping that one a secret for now. Where we are at this point is trying to decide if we are gonna do another egg retrieval or transfer these. So I have a fibroid that is about the size of a tennis ball. I don't have any tennis balls, but size of your fist, smaller than your fist, but I have a pretty decent sized fibroid. So we are getting that removed today. I'll probably do another video on fibroids Maybe I will, I don't know. Um, we'll see how my energy is. But um, we're having that removed today, and then we have a four month wait between the time of my surgery today and the time that we can transfer the embryos. Early this spring, we actually have some stuff coming up and some travel, so we're probably gonna wait a little bit longer to transfer the embryos than like February or March when we would be able to. And we only have two. And, you know, statistics again, there's like a 50% drop off rate at every point. So there's a 50% chance one of these two embryos won't make it, but there's a 50% chance both won't make it, right? So each one has a 50% chance of making it. So it basically leaves us with like not the greatest odds of having a genetically, not genetically, not the greatest odds of having a baby. And we've got four months to kill while we wait. So we are probably going to do another egg retrieval. I have a whole other video I'm going to do on that when the time comes. Because we also went through some pretty emotional, like, reactive behavior when it comes to our doctor. Are we with the right doctor? Is he doing the right things? We sought some input from a few other doctors and it all led back to kind of the same thought, which I will cover on a different video. So today is surgery day for my fibroid. I, my surgery is not until four, it's like nine o'clock in the morning. So I have a lot of time to think about how hungry and thirsty I am before my surgery. I'm going to be in the hospital at least one, if not two nights, because it's pretty major surgery. It's a three hour surgery. 
my doctor's going to do it with a da Vinci robot. So I don't know exactly how that works. Like he steers the robot, robot does the surgery. It's pretty cool. But instead of filleting me open like a C-section, they literally take one camera, put it through my belly button, and then a probe on each side, do their magic, and then get that fibroid out. But they have layers and layers and layers and layers of stitches they have to do after that to close me up. Not at the incision points, like those are small, but through your uterus. There's a lot of layers in there. <clears throat> so they got to stitch all that up, let it heal, and then we will be on to our next decision, which is try and get more embryos or not. And I don't know what the answer to that is yet. We think we want one more, one child. But then when we realized we had two genetically normal embryos, and when we learned what the sex of those embryos were, we wanted both. And so, I don't know if there'll be an extreme sense of disappointment if one works and the other doesn't. But I also don't want to end up with, say, five embryos, first two take, and then I have these three embryos and I don't know what to do with them. So, just a lot to think about over the next few days for Chris and I. A lot of praying to do and just kind of letting God speak to us and tell us what's in our future. So this video is probably already way too long because I've done a lot of talking and then flipping back and forth between my surgery videos. But at the end of the day, I ended up with 13 eggs retrieved, two viable embryos. My first time I had 17 retrieved and two viable embryos. So we're pretty consistent with my embryo quality, which is one of our infertility issues, is egg quality. We are starting to, now that we've had two full cycles and see that they are genetically normal embryos, at least three of the four were genetically normal because the one I miscarried was genetically normal. Now that we know they are more genetically normal than abnormal eggs, we are are leaning more towards it being an egg maturity issue. So my doctor and I and the other doctors I've seen have all talked about various ways to impre improve the maturity of those eggs by changing medications and doing a couple other things. So we shall see what comes from here. But for now, I'm going to Trader Joe's to replenish my husband's cookie stash because Monday is his birthday and I'm not going to be able to do anything for his birthday on Monday. So I'm going to replenish his cookie stash. We actually had a surprise party for him with the kids yesterday. yesterday so I let them pick out the balloons and everything. J Jacob got a Halloween balloon for him. We had a cake. The kids made a mess in the house with streamers. My husband let them wrap him up like a mummy. I think the kids had more fun than we did, but it was a good time. So that is all for now. That is like for real all for now. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe. IVF Inspired is my Instagram name as well. So if you want to look at more funny memes and stuff like that, I really post more pictures of my dog. So I need to get it together with the IVF stuff on my Instagram, but I will love you guys. Peace out. Bye.